In this video, we'll cover all you need to know before traveling to Singapore, including maps, transportation, where to stay, how much things cost, best apps, best city views, and much more. Here are our 12 essential tips. Number 12. The map of Singapore. For orientation, let's start with Gardens by the Bay, a heaven for nature lovers with almost 200 acres or 100 hectares of land and many different attractions. Next to it is the Marina Bay Waterfront Promenade, with numerous amazing attractions such as Art Science Museum, Marina Bay Sands with Infinity Pool and the Merlion Park. Right next to it you will find the beautiful Manhattan-like skyscrapers in the financial district. If you cross the Singapore River on the historical Anderson Bridge, you will arrive at Asian Civilizations Museum, statue of Singapore's founder, Sir Stamford Raffles, Esplanade Park, and theaters on the bay. The Singapore Flyer offers fantastic views of the city. Clark Key is the nightlife and shopping hub of Singapore, and right next door there is the Fort Canning Park, a historical park with a fortress from the 19th century and other attractions and gardens. Continue north and you will find Boogie Street Shopping Mall, the famous Kampong Glam district with Haji Lane with independent fashion stores. Little India is another neighborhood with rich culture. Geylang is another great district with Sri Shivan Temple, Geylang Sarai Market, Peranakan Houses and more. Chinatown is rich with history and culture and offers a ton of activities like family-run restaurants and traditional tea houses. The Sentosa Island with many beautiful man-made beaches, theme parks, Fort Siloso and other attractions is located in the most southern part of Singapore. Also located in the southern part of Singapore is the famous pedestrian bridge known as Henderson Waves. West of the bridge you will find interesting theme park Hopar Villa, Jurong Lake Gardens and Jurong Bird Park. If you love nature, then also visit the Singapore Botanic Garden or Central Catchment Area featuring three top walk suspension bridge, Jalutang Tower Observation Deck, Singapore Zoo and other attractions. And don't miss the Sungai Bula Wetland Reserve located further north overlooking Malaysia. Also located in its northern part is the beautiful Sankang Riverside Park and the last surviving Kampong Lorong Wangkok. Singapore Changi Airport is situated in the eastern part of Singapore, approximately 50 minutes from downtown Singapore if you use public transportation or about 20 minutes by car. To get a better sense of the distance, a 1.5 mile or 2.5 kilometer long walk from Clark Key to Gardens by the Bay takes about 30 minutes and a 4 mile or 7 kilometer long walk from Chinatown to Siloza Beach on the Sentosa Island takes about 1 hour and a half of walking or about the same time if you combine walking, public transportation and cable car. Number 11. Weather and climate. Singapore has a tropical climate with hot and humid weather throughout the year. There is little difference in temperature between the months. Temperatures usually range between 73 and 88 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 and 31 degrees Celsius. Heavy rainfall usually can occur year-round, but even more so from November to January. Rain in Singapore is often accompanied by thunder. Because of the high humidity in Singapore, we recommend wearing sports clothes that can dry fast. It can really make a difference and makes exploring Singapore much more bearable. The hottest months are June and July, and December and January are the coldest. Of course, these are all just averages. The weather and temperatures can be different when you visit, so remember to always check the weather forecast before you travel. Number 10. Best time to visit. The best time to visit Singapore is between February and April when there is less rainfall. The weather is not as harsh and it is still pleasant. Singapore is considered a year-round destination, so there will be crowds of tourists regardless of the season. Chinese New Year usually means even more tourists and higher prices, while the weather is still pleasant. 
events like Formula One race that takes place in September also draws more tourist crowds as well as higher prices. The cheapest time to visit Singapore is from July to August when there are few tourists and the prices of accommodation are lower. However, you will probably have a great time regardless of the season since Singapore is full of amazing attractions and things you can do all year long no matter how rainy it is. And how can you figure out the best day and hour to see the attractions? Just check Google to see how crowded a specific location is at a particular time of day. Of course, we recommend going early during the week and or in the morning. Many travelers stay in Singapore for three days to see its main attractions. If you want a more relaxed experience, you can visit an extra day or two. Number 9. Where to stay and prices of accommodation. If this is your first time in Singapore, choose to stay in the Civic District where you'll have many of the best sites, bars and restaurants just minutes away. For nightlife, stay in Clark Key close to Marina Bay. If you're on a budget, stay in Little India or Chinatown. These two neighborhoods are also where the cheapest eats and accommodation can be found. If you're traveling with the family, Sentosa Island is a great option. A mid-range hotel double room in Singapore costs between 80 and 120 Singapore dollars per night. For budget hotel, the price can go as low as 20 Singapore dollars per night, but prices can go up when there are more crowds. Singapore is also full of capsule hotels, which cost around 40 Singapore dollars on average. Hostels cost around 20 Singapore dollars per night. Alternatively, you can rent an Airbnb apartment. You can find a shared room for around 18 Singapore dollars or a small apartment for around 62 Singapore dollars per night. Again, these are all just average prices and the ranges for different hotel categories are quite extensive. In the peak season or during the weekends, the accommodation can be more expensive. However, with a little research online, you can get better deals, especially if your dates are flexible and you don't travel in high season. Reason. Check out our video on the best steps for booking your stay. Number 8. Transportation from and to the airport. To get from and to Changi Airport, you can use Metro via Changi Airport Metro Station, bus, airport shuttle that is shuttle headed downtown, a Changi Airport bus service, and a bus to Tanamera Ferry Terminal. Taxis, Grab, which is the Singapore version of Uber, and car rentals. Getting around the city. Most of the sites in Singapore are close by, so it is easy to get around on foot. But if you don't feel like walking, you can use the following modes of transportation. A very efficient metro system, bus, and it's important to know that there are two bus operators in Singapore, SBS Transit and SMRT. Trishas, a transportation method from World War II, now used for tourist routes. Grab, bikes, a riverboat or bum boat, and other forms of transportation. If you use public transportation, it is more comfortable and more convenient to use an EasyLink card. You can use it for MRT trains, local buses, river boats, and the Sentosa Express monorail, and even taxis. You can buy the card at any customer service counter or any 7-Eleven for about 12 Singapore dollars or 10 Singapore dollars respectively. You can reload the card for a minimum of 10 Singapore dollars and a maximum of 500 Singapore dollars at any station ticket machine. An alternative to an EasyLink card is a Singapore tourist pass, which you can buy at the airport MRT station and some stations in the city. If you'll ride the bus, the average fare costs between 1 and 2 Singapore dollars, while a single trip ticket for the MRT is from 2 to 3 dollars. Check out our travel guide for more information and prices. By the way, our travel guide is a mobile-friendly PDF document that you can store on your phone for offline use. It covers the top 10 things to do in Singapore, plus 10 additional attractions, maps, links, opening hours, and other information that will help make your trip to Singapore stress-free. Number 7. Singapore Specifics Discipline is highly regarded in Singapore, so make sure not to break any of the following laws. Chewing gum is illegal in Singapore. Jaywalking is forbidden, so make sure to find the appropriate pedestrian lane. Singapore is known for being very clean, so they're strict against littering and smoking in indoor public areas and some select outdoor facilities. There is no eating and drinking inside the MRT station and inside the trains. Don't feed the pigeons. And remember that you are required to flush the public toilet. 
Let's go over some other info worth mentioning. Singapore uses the metric system and the Singaporeans drive on the left. People often walk and stand on the left side of the lane in foot traffic. Do not sit on the reserved seat on public transportation as it is seen as rude to take the place of someone who needs it, like the elderly. Number 6. General information. Here are some other things you should know for a pleasant stay in Singapore. Safety. Singapore is an extremely safe place for tourists and otherwise. Of course, just in case, watch your valuables and use common sense. As mentioned, Singapore is very strict with their laws like littering, chewing gum or smoking in public and is therefore one of the cleanest places on earth. They are also very strict when it comes to drugs. For emergency services, dial 999. Drinking water. It is perfectly safe to drink tap water in Singapore. There is not a lot of drinking water fountains available throughout the city, but still you can find water bottled refill stations or you can just refill from a public tap. If you can't find one, you can just buy bottled water in a store. Toilets. There are many public toilets in Singapore. Most of them are free of charge. If you can't find a public restroom near you, you can easily use a bathroom of a bar, a restaurant or a shopping center. Free Wi-Fi. You can get free Wi-Fi at most hotels and hostels with Singapore's wireless at SG free public Wi-Fi. There are some outdoor and indoor hotspots in the city, including restaurants, fast food places, cafes, bars and hotels. Crowds and lines. Singapore is a very popular destination, so be prepared to wait in line, especially when it's the holiday season and around big tourist attractions. The same goes for restaurants and other public places. Even if you can't avoid all the crowds, you can do some things to make your trip to Singapore a more pleasant experience. You can avoid peak seasons, avoid traveling during the rush hours, get up early in the morning to explore the city without the crowds, use Google Maps or a similar app to check how crowded a specific location is at a particular time of day, or explore the suburbs once you've visited the must-see attractions at a city center. Wheelchair access. With various government projects for accessibility in public places, Singapore is very wheelchair friendly. Metro stations are equipped with priority lifts and wheelchair accessible toilets. Public buses and wheelchair accessible taxis are not uncommon. Number 5. For international travelers. Travel adapters. If you're coming from outside Singapore, you will probably need a UK travel adapter to charge your phone and other devices. This is what the UK power plug looks like. We recommend purchasing a travel adapter before traveling to Singapore. In fact, it is worth buying a universal travel adapter so you can use it in other countries too. We've also made a video about travel adapters and outlet styles around the world. The link is in the description. Currency. Singapore uses the Singapore dollar. One Singapore dollar equals approximately 70 cents American or 63 euro cents. While most hotels, stores and restaurants in the city accept major credit cards like Visa and MasterCard, it is always wise to have some Singapore dollars with you, especially if you plan to visit a local hawker market and other similar places. Also, always check the exchange rate before traveling. ATMs and money exchange. In Singapore, ATMs can be found all over the city. For better exchange rates and smaller fees, always choose to be built in Singapore dollars and only use ATMs owned by banks. You can choose to exchange your foreign cash at licensed money exchange offices all over the city. Many prefer that over banks since they usually offer a better exchange rate. Make sure always to compare the exchange rate. Banks also have a flat fee of 3 Singapore dollars. Prepaid SIM cards and pocket Wi-Fi. You can purchase a prepaid SIM card for tourists to access the internet on your phone. Prepaid SIM cards cost around 15 Singapore dollars. Some options provided by local carriers are M1, Singtel and Starhub. Alternatively, you can consider renting a mobile hotspot. If you're from the US and travel a lot, consider using Google Fi. See our travel guide for more information. Visa. For tourists, a passport valid for at least six months and a return ticket is required to enter the city state. When it comes to visas, most nationalities can enter for a maximum of 30 days, such as residents of United States, Canada, European Union, Australia, New Zealand, Norway, South Korea, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom, can enter visa free for a maximum of 90 days. Number 4. Best Apps. Here is a list of useful apps to use in Singapore. 
Explore Singapore, a helpful tool for the metro line maps and routes. Grab to book a ride to get around the city, similar to Uber or Lyft. Ride, request a ride and the driver will pick you up and get you to your destination. Chop for restaurant booking reservations and exclusive deals. Weather at SG to know what the weather will be like for the next couple of days. TripAdvisor and Yelp for reviews of restaurants, hotels, museums, tours, etc. With locals to book experience with locals. Google Maps or Apple Maps for walking, public transportation, driving, etc. Google Maps also lets you download maps, which is an excellent option if you don't want to use roaming. Number 3. Food prices and tipping. Singapore has plenty of dining options and offers a great variety of international and Singaporean dining. We suggest using Yelp or TripAdvisor to find nearby places with good reviews. An inexpensive restaurant meal ranges from 6 to 14 Singapore dollars and a three-course meal at a mid-range restaurant is about 30 Singapore dollars. A traditional Singapore dish like the chicken rice is from 2 to 3 Singapore dollars. You can find very affordable Malay, Indian and Chinese cuisine in Singapore. You can also try the world's cheapest Michelin star meal, the chicken rice dish in Lia Fan Hong Kong soy sauce chicken rice and noodle. Located in Chinatown, this dish is only $3.80 and got its Michelin star in 2016. As for drinks, in bars, a coffee costs from 1 to 2 Singapore dollars or about 7 Singapore dollars at a Starbucks. A bottle of water is about $1.50, a bottle of soda is about 2 Singapore dollars, a pint of beer is from 4 to 7 dollars, a glass of wine costs about 13 Singapore dollars and cocktails cost from 7 to 10 Singapore dollars. Of course, prices are higher in front of the famous tourist places. There are plenty of great cheap eats in Singapore. Check out our guide for maps with the best cheap eats. Tipping. Tipping is generally discouraged in Singapore. Most restaurants will have a 10% service charge already included. Number 2. City Passes and Guided Tours If you're planning to visit several attractions, you can purchase one of several city passes depending on your preferences. Some of the main providers include the Singapore Tourist Pass, offering many different options, including Singapore Tourist Pass, SG Tourist Pass, Tourist Pass Plus, and STP Charm, the Sentosa Fun Pass, if you're planning to visit the Sentosa Island, Singapore City Pass, the Singapore Pass, and Go Singapore Pass. A great way to discover Singapore is by walking tour organized by professional guides who know a great deal about the city's rich history. Some providers even offer free walking tours. However, at the end of the tour, it is recommended to make a donation. See our travel guide for links to websites of free guided tours and other exciting tours in Singapore. You can also discover Singapore by a hop-on, hop-off bus, a boat tour, a Trisha tour, a night tour or a food tour. There are plenty of options to choose from. Check out our travel guide for the list of providers and links. Number 1. Best views of the city. You can enjoy amazing views of Singapore from one of the following places. The Singapore Flyer, Helix Bridge, Sand Sky Park Observation Deck, Marina Bay Waterfront Promenade, Gardens by the Bay, the Merlion Park, One Altitude Bar with a rooftop area, or Padang Deck at the National Gallery. Check out our travel guide for more places with amazing views of the city and maps to quickly locate them. And don't forget to check out top 10 things to do in Singapore, just click here.